your alumni. And I'm sure in the future, after you graduate, you'll call and you'll come back and share with us your experience. And now let me introduce our speaker. Tom Lowlander is a 1976 graduate of the MSPE program. He is now the Chief Technology Officer and co-founder of Cross Group, a global health marketplace. This is the fifth software company, not the first one, the fifth one, and the fifth one. And Lowlander has launched the fifth company, and his passion for innovation remains as fresh today as when he was a UW student. Lowlander's inspiration for Costco came from his father's Alzheimer's disease diagnosis in 2005. That was devastating news for him, but he struggled to find a way to use his engineering background and ingenuity and innovation to help solder some of his mother's additional caretaking responsibilities. His efforts created a tool for the secure desktop sharing software. that is now available in 21 languages and used by individuals and business businesses in more than 190 countries for technical support, training, and collaboration. During graduate school, Rolanda held a paid internship at Group, where he gained practical experience, access to labs, and equipment, and duration support. Tom's previous branches have included serving as Director of Research and Development at Lowell, the CCO of PGSoft, and the Vice President of Engineering and Research and Development and Critical Research. Florida is not only an engineer and a scientist, he also is an athlete. It hampers the intensity of his work life with equally ambitious athletic pursuits as an avid sailor, a pilot, a cyclist, and runner. And he has completed more than 100 marathons. Anybody here has won one more than 100 marathons? Okay, so the most recent one being the Big Sur Marathon, the Cody Marathon, and first of the Sun Park Marathon, all of these are parts to run. So please help me welcome Paul Golden. will have a role in every emerging technology. 
Let me put this time frame in perspective by highlighting just a few of the technologies which have emerged over the past 33 years. Personal computers, magnetic resonance imaging, cell phones, the internet, and the World Wide Web. In the case of supercomputers, the processing power has increased by over one billion times during my career. That's nine orders of magnitude. While writing this commencement address, I had an ideal opportunity to learn about some of the current research in electrical engineering at the University of Washington. I was delighted to get a glimpse of some of the innovation students and faculty are working on right now. In the next 33 years, we're certain to see further development of synthetic biology in the modeling and building of genetic circuits, emerging technology of self-assembly, and vastly improved mobile telecommunications that allow real-time two-way video conversations. All of this technology requires the excitement and passion of an entrepreneur. All of you graduates here are potential entrepreneurs. There's a lot of different definitions for entrepreneur. The one that I like best is entrepreneur is a term applied to the type of personality who is willing to take upon herself or himself a new venture or enterprise and accepts full responsibility for the outcome. Whatever you choose to do now upon graduation will be a new venture. And in order to be successful at whatever you choose, you will need to take full responsibility for <coughs> From my experience, I believe that the major components of having a successful and satisfying career as an engineer and entrepreneur are curiosity, inventiveness, and passion. It's what we believe each of these. Curiosity plays a vital role in the development of new technology. Being curious is really to ask questions. How, where, what, when, and why. Answering these questions gives us understanding about how something works. And sometimes curiosity also plays a role in understanding why things don't work. You can encourage your curiosity by trying new things. You graduates should be used to doing You've had classes which change practically every quarter, introducing you to new subjects and new challenges. While there is a comfort to be found in familiarity, it will not encourage curiosity, and that is essential for an entrepreneur. I urge you to look for change and then embrace it. Let me give you the best excuse you will ever have to buy new toys. I have found that new toys are a great way to encourage curiosity. This is a lesson I learned from my best friend and mentor, Gary Kildall, a fellow graduate of the University of Washington and the author of the CPM operating system. Gary always bought the newest toys immediately when they hit the store. I'll give you a couple of examples. Sony introduced the Discman portable CD player in 1984. Gary and I were extremely curious about CD technology and the potential to reliably store large amounts of digital data on a read-only media. This toy spawned our second startup company, KnowledgeSec, where we developed and marketed the first commercially available encyclopedia on CD-ROM. In 1994, I led the memorial service for Gary. I had one prop I brought with me when I gave that eulogy. It was the first issue of Byte Magazine in September of 1975, which carried the headline, Computers, the World's Greatest Toy. In 1975, Personal computers were regarded merely as toys. Consider for a moment how important it was for us early pioneers to buy and experiment with that new toy. So, my advice to you graduates is buy new toys. <laughs> I will happily take 
some of the credit when a new generation of toys inspires your curiosity and your next invention. This leads me to inventiveness. The next step after your curiosity has led you to a problem is inventiveness, finding a solution. And the secret to inventiveness is persistence. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, lots of them. In fact, those who are afraid of making mistakes seldom make anything else. To be inventive, you should be constantly <coughs> measuring outcomes, adjusting and improving. The important thing is what you learn at each step, that you, that you progressed. It doesn't matter how many readjustments need to be made. These are not failures, simply improvements on the final product. Gary Kildall, whom I mentioned a moment ago, is featured in a book called They Made America by Harold Evans. Actually, I have a purple and gold for the evening. Evans was editor of the London Times and president of Random House Publishing. And this is arguably the best book written about adventures in the United States. There is a chapter on Gary entitled, Gary Kildall, he saw the future and made it work. He was the true founder of the personal computer revolution and the father of PC software. Not only does this book tell the true story of how Gary founded the personal computer technology that we all rely upon today, but it also includes a chapter entitled, 10 Lessons, What Can Be Learned from History's Innovators. A few of my favorite lessons from favorite, famous inventors include, make no assumptions. Nothing works the first time. New ideas disturb, and success is risky. If there is any one single message which I would like to convey to you in my address this evening, it is to be passionate. Be passionate about your work. Trust me. As an entrepreneur, it will take a great deal of passion to see a problem all the way to its solution. And when choosing a problem to solve, choose a problem that you truly have a passion to solve. Be passionate about your recreation. Exercise. Get out of the office and away to the computer and the lab. Exercise has the combined benefits of good health and problem solving. If nothing else, take a lunch break and go for a walk. I guarantee you that you will be more productive when you get back to work and have you chosen to work right through lunch. And be passionate about your life. If you don't have lots of passions, go find them and make thoughtful choices regarding your lifestyle and career in order to keep those passions alive. Do what you love and love what you do. You are now well prepared with your electrical engineering degree from the University of Washington for a successful career. The fact that you are prepared should give you confidence about your future. My favorite quote about preparation is from a famous Tanzanian marathon who said, the will to win means nothing without the will to prepare. The electrical engineering graduates of 2009 have demonstrated the will to prepare. Now, do whatever it takes to get that first job and turn your nervousness about the future into excitement. You need only the curiosity, the inventiveness, and the passion to make it a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, for your very insightful speech. As a token of our appreciation, we would like to present you with this 
We now move on to the presentation.